In this experiment, we will try to find out the relationship between the length of a constant wire and the resistance across it. So the hypothesis is this. When the length of the constant wire is long, the resistance across it will also be big as well. So before doing anything else, it is very important for us to test that the voltmeter, amp meter, and the battery works. So to do that, I will try to short circuit the amp meter and find out the terminal potential difference or the EMF of the battery using the voltmeter. That way, I will be more confident to see that the voltmeter actually works, the amp meter works, and the batteries are in good health. So we have the voltmeter, amp meter, battery holder, two batteries, a switch, some connecting wires, constant wire and a real state. Let's first test out if the amp meter works. Now the reading on the amp meter doesn't really show much of a detail. So as long as it shows some deflection, a really big deflection, say for example maybe 1 ohm, 2, sorry, 1 amp, 2 amp or 3 amp, that gives me a clear indication that the amp meter actually works. So to do that, I will first put my batteries in the battery holder as such. And since I'm using two pieces of size D battery, I will be using this terminal, which is the positive terminal, and connect it to the last one, which shows the 3 volt here. So by doing that, I'm going to have my connecting wire first right here. The positive will be connected to the positive in order to get me a positive deflection. And another connecting wire like this. and over here. So when you do this, just do it quickly enough to show you that the ammeter actually works. Don't leave it on for too long because you do not want to drain your battery. As you can see here, the ammeter actually shows some form of deflection. So it shows that the ammeter actually works. Now let's try for the voltmeter. As you can see, this is a dual range voltmeter. That means if you connect one terminal on the negative here, and if you're using the 5 volt here, you have to use the upper scale reading because the upper scale reading shows you from 0 to 5 volt. But if you're using this negative terminal and this 15 volt here, you'll be using the lower scale reading here so that it will show you an indication from 0 to 15 volt. So in my case here, I know that I'm only using two batteries here. Each will be 1.5 volt, 1.5 volt. So I will actually just use this terminal and the 5 volt terminal to use the upper reading. So if this voltmeter is working perfectly, it should give me around 3 volt because that is the electromotive force of the battery when you're not using it. Let's find out. Alright, it shows that it is indeed more or less 3 volt. That is really good because it shows that my battery is in good condition. Now, if you happen to use the 15 volt scale, you should use the lower reading, the lower scale reading, which is 3 volt as well, if you use the lower scale reading. Now that I'm confident that my battery works, my voltmeter works, and my amp meter works, it is now time to do the actual experiment to determine how the length of a constant wire actually affects the resistance across the constant wire. Now I leave my voltmeter aside first because that would be the last thing that I will connect in my circuit. So first off, I will connect this terminal followed by the end of this constant wire. Now in the experimental procedure, we first use 10 cm of a constant wire. So I'll actually bend this constant wire to indicate that this is 10 cm. Okay, so I'm not using a ruler. You have to use a ruler to measure it correctly. So let's just leave this aside like this. Cutting at the end like this. Connect the 10 centimeter. 
put it across the end meter and then my switch comes in this switch in this orientation this is called closing the switch well this one means open the switch by opening the switch you prevent current from flowing through the circuit Remember, I'm using two batteries, so it should be positive here and 3 volt here. So this is the most fundamental way of connecting a circuit so that the current will actually flow like this. So let's close the switch to find out if the emitter still work. It is always a good idea to try to do it step by step. Try to expand the circuit slowly. Don't be too quick and rush through it. Let's see. And there we go. We get a deflection on the emitter. It shows that the current actually flows through the circuit. Now, when you're not using it or when you're not taking any reading, please remember to open the circuit like this so that you don't waste or you do not drain the battery. And most importantly, you do not heat up the constant wire because by heating up the constant wire, it will actually deter or it will affect the reading that you get. Now, the problem with this setup is that I have no way of manipulating the current flowing through the circuit. In order to manipulate the current flowing through the circuit, it is always a good idea to introduce a real state. Now, in the use of real state, you can actually increase the resistance of the whole circuit. So from the basic formula V equals to IR, we know that when voltage is constant or voltage supply is constant, by increasing the resistance, the current in the circuit will drop. So how do we use this constant wire? So it looks something like this. The easiest way of using a real state is to have the connection right here, the first one, and the second one comes in right here. So that way you can actually cause the current to flow through the coils in the, con uh, in the real state and flows up through this pin here. So by adjusting the knob like this, since it has less wire to flow through that means the resistance will be lower because it's just going to flow through here up and down in the wire in the coil and go up and out of it so if you want to increase your resistance just drag this all the way to the end like this so that you have to let the current flow through more coils in the real state flow up and out of the circuit when more coils are being used higher resistance Let's see if this actually works. First, I will detach this guy. Connect it right here. Since this is a metallic conductor, you can connect it any way you like. You can connect it right here, right here, right here, or right here. Up to you. So let's just put this nicely first. Like this. And I need another wire to come out from here. Let's close the switch to see if the circuit still works. And perfect, we can see some deflection on the amp meter right here. So as I have spoken before, when you have high resistance, the current should be very low. So that means if I were to drag this knob all the way to the left, it will, should have lower resistance. When the circuit has lower resistance, the current should be higher. So it should deflect more to the right. Let's see if this works. Now it shows a current of about 0.5 ampere. So if I want to increase the resistance again, 
all the way to the back right here it now shows me about a current of 0.2 ampere only so my hypothesis is correct higher resistance lower current so it looks like almost everything is done already but there is no way for me to determine the potential difference across the wire this 10 centimeter wire so how do we connect the voltmeter now please bear in mind that the circuit is a series circuit starting from here flowing like this into the real state into the amp meter across the switch and back again so a voltmeter must be connected parallel to the circuit that means you cannot put your voltmeter in series like this it must be across the wire like this so let's see how do i connect the voltmeter let me put one of the things on the side first like this wire closer and my voltmeter so let's do this since this comes up from the negative like this I'll just put negative right here and I know that the voltage reading will be very very small so I'm gonna use the 5 volt range so that I can read my voltmeter more sensitive it will be more sensitive so let's bring in this i have two wires here i must connect it parallel to the circuit so i'm just gonna clip it right here that part and this one connect it right here And there we go this is how you connect the circuit now if you just look at this it looks very complicated this is why i say that it is a good idea to always start from the basic one without the voltmeter first the voltmeter will only come in later on so with this since i know that this circuit is correct let me try to put my meters side by side and see how they show their readings respectively so as you can see i am still closing my switch here it's still closed let's find now if I adjust the knob, what happens? Let's set it all the way to 0.5 ampere. So when it's 0.5 ampere, the voltmeter reading is, remember, since I'm using the 5 volt scale, I should use the upper scale. And it shows that it is about 0.4 or 0.3 volt. So that is the potential difference across this 10 centimeter wire. Now let's do a hypothesis. I have to make sure that my current stays at a range of 0.5 ampere, 0.5 ampere. So my hypothesis is this. When I use a longer wire, there will be a greater potential difference across the wire. So I make sure that I keep my current constant variable which is 0.5 ampere and then i will try to find out by using a longer wire will i get more than 0.3 volt let's find out so i'll just detach this guy and this guy and this time instead of using 10 centimeter i go all the way by using 30 centimeter right here a 30 centimeter wire So I'm going to connect it right here, like this. And this one right here. So just now, the voltmeter reading was around 0.3 voltage. Now, let me check my ammeter reading. Okay, it is still 0.5 ampere. Let's find out if the voltage increases. From 0.3, it is now 0.6, and that is correct because the longer the wire the greater the potential difference across it now how do we find the resistance across the wire by using these two values we can use the basic formula v equals to ir voltage divided by the current you'll be able to get the resistance of the wire and if you tabulate your data you should notice or you realize that the longer the wire the higher the resistance across that wire.